All right, good morning, everybody. This is um, off time uh, because we just finished our bond commission meeting and uh, wanted to follow up on that. Uh, just over the course of this weekend, give you an idea of some of the things that have transpired. Um, you saw the reports that the, uh, the five-minute Abbott Lab test is now being made available to Connecticut and other states. We're going to have 69,000 tests available, you know, in less than a week. Uh, this is a pretty big deal. While we have more PCR testing than just about anybody else, what this allows us to do is, for example, go into our schools. Anybody there showing any symptoms at all, a non-intrusive test costs, uh, you know, one one-hundredth of the normal test. We'll be able to uh, take care of that and give you a real-time response. It means perhaps you don't have to quarantine because we'll be able to tell you that was uh, sniffles and that's not uh, COVID. Obviously, if you do have the sniffles, don't go to school uh, at all. Um, secondly, it's worth noting that um, we're going to announce a deal that we've got with Apple and Google. This is going to be an online track and trace um, new generation. We'll be able to roll this out over the next uh, 30 days or so. Josh can get into that. We're doing this in association, again, with New York and New Jersey. But it's an app on your phone that will be able to tell you in almost real time whether you've been in contact with anybody who tested positive. Uh, two things worth discussing a little bit, but happy to take questions. Max? Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Hi there. Good morning. Good morning. Could you please talk a little bit more about the money that the federal government uh, has committed or they promised to and will that help in Connecticut reopen faster and safe? That was about the five-minute um, test, is that right? The Abbott Lab test, I think? Yeah, yeah. What, uh, what, what the federal government's doing is uh, we had our COVID task force meeting at the very end of last week where Vice President Pence uh, announced this. Uh, they're going to buy up um, all of uh, Abbott Labs' capacity for the near term, which is going to be 150 million doses. Uh, we're going to be getting the first uh, tranche of that uh, in, in, in less than a week. Uh, I think this is really important because um, uh, it allows you to um, have a test done locally, on site, um, at the uh, school, for example. You get an immediate response. Uh, it's highly accurate, especially for those who are in the early stages or showing symptoms, at least. And uh, given the cost factor, I think we'll be able to roll this out in a dramatic way. It complements all the testing we're doing right now, the PCR testing, nursing homes, vulnerable populations. So it just is one more um, arrow in our quiver. The Hartford Current. Thank you. Hartford Current. Uh, yes, Governor. Uh, on a related point on that, do you, do you have any concerns about students going to school while they're awaiting their test results or uh, showing symptoms? We had, a, we had some cases like that in, in Merritt, and that's happened in other states, uh, too. Uh, do you have concerns about that? Well, you won't have to wait for your Abbott lab because uh, you're going to get it in a matter of uh, a few minutes. But broadly speaking, yes. I mean, right now, um, if you are feeling ill, if you are showing any signs of symptoms at all, you should not be going to school. You should not be going to the workplace. Uh, you know, right now, as you know, um, three, four, five days from infection before you're showing any symptoms, you can still be contagious, in some cases highly contagious. And it's tougher to test those people who have just been infected with any degree of certainty. So when in doubt, hold off. Uh, Chris, I think, um, as the governor mentioned, the most important guidance here is if someone's feeling sick to stay home. And to your question, if you're awaiting test results because you're feeling sick or because you've been notified that you were in close contact with someone who did test positive, then you also need to stay home and self-quarantine until you get those test results. The use case that these Abbott, new Abbott uh, uh, rapid tests will be really useful for in schools, as we've heard from superintendents and others of a challenge that's coming up is, if someone, let's say, in the middle of the day does present with symptoms, um, the schools are taking the right approach to essentially figure out, do the contact tracing, figure out who may have been in contact. And that, while that work is going on, it could result, even if the test result is coming back in 24 hours, 
um, and it comes back negative, in the meantime, we may have had to close a school or we may have had to have a bunch of people stay home. So with that quick test result, we get that negative test, we rule out COVID, and you can avoid some of those school closures or some of those classes having to shut down for a period of time. So it's an area where we're really uh, hopeful that this uh, new testing technology will, uh, will be very beneficial in our schools, potentially daycare centers uh, and other similar facilities. Uh, also, Governor, on a point from uh, late late Friday, uh, there's been some criticism about this uh, two million dollar study with the Boston Consulting Group. Um, do you believe that that OPM and other state agencies uh, don't have enough people to do this themselves, or they don't have enough expertise to do this themselves? No. In, in fact, the legislature. Um Look, going back to the Fiscal Commission a few years ago, Paul was on that. He can speak to that. They said, let's find a, a nationally ranked uh, a consultant who can give us the best advice how we can save money uh, in terms of efficiency, best practices from around the country. That's been compounded, the need to do this now, by the fact that we could have uh, a lot of people retiring 20, 25 percent over the next couple of years. Then the legislature, in their wisdom, back in uh, the 2017 budget, directed uh, the, um, the governor to hire a nationally uh, recognized a consulting firm to do just this type of analysis. Obviously, we had an election. We had COVID, so things slowed down a little bit. But now we're following on their lead to make sure we can get the very best advice we can to save the taxpayers' money. Okay. Did Paul want to say something there? I, I thought he nodded his head. Did Paul want to say something? No, I was nodding my head in agreement with what the governor stated. Okay. Just wanted to be sure. <laughs> Hearst, Connecticut Media. Thanks, Max. Um, hi, Governor. Um, Emily Munson in Washington had a couple of follow-up questions on the tests. Um, it looks like you answered one of them, um, 60, 69,000 within a week. Um, do you have a total number that might be shipped? Uh, I, if the total is 150 million, some of that is allocated towards special needs situations, but 100 million, if we get our 1%, it's based upon per capita. That would mean we ought to have a million um, tests available over the next few months. And um, I think you went over a little bit of this. How would you anticipate using it? It seems like you'd be using it to go into schools to stop, um, to target outbreaks and the like. Yeah, that's just one example. We also be focused on vulnerable populations, first responders. Any ideas? Yeah, the, the other, uh, in addition to uh, the, the schools and, and child care settings, um, the other area that we're looking at is for our rapid response team, um, where we bring in additional uh, resources if there's an outbreak in a, in a nursing home, in a prison, in a, um, you know, other congregate setting or in a city, um, you know, as we did previously in Danbury. Just helps us get those results back a little bit faster. Um, we're very fortunate in Connecticut that we still uh, have broad-based PCR testing, as the governor mentioned. We're getting our results back in 24 to 48 hours. So this is um, just another helpful toolkit for us on that rapid response team as well. Well, now that you're warmed up, Josh, can you talk about the Apple and Google uh, tracking <laughs> plan? Sure. How long do you have? Uh, one of my favorite topics. Um, no, what we're going to do is um, we, we, uh, we're going to, um, uh, in, the, in the coming weeks, as the governor mentioned, we're going to turn on the, the functionality for uh, the citizens of Connecticut to opt in to what's called a, it's called a notification alert. So you opt in on your phone, and then anonymously, um, uh, Apple or if you're on an Android device, your Android device will be keeping track of who you've been within close contact of over a period of time. And then if someone uh, tests positive, um, they get a key, co a key that they put into their phone, and then it's automatically notified whoever the people are that they had been in close contact with so that they can get some additional advice about what they may need to do, whether it's talk to their doctor, self-isolate, et cetera. It's all anonymous. There's no location uh, monitoring. Google and Apple have worked very hard on this to make sure all the privacy considerations are taken care of. Um, and we've actually taken a bit of a, a cautious approach on this, watching some other states go first and making sure the technology is proven out, really focusing on the bread and butter contact tracing, which is you can think of as kind of a cousin to this. This is just another uh, set of tools to give people a bit more information. But we'll have much more on this in the coming weeks, um, including uh, when it goes live and how people can access that functionality. Uh, so much more to come. 
Thank you. NBC Connecticut. The Associated Press. Good morning. Uh, Governor, some states, including Mississippi, I, I guess, have said they're going to use the rapid testing for daily tests in the schools. Is there any plans for you to change your school poli testing policy as a result of, of getting these rapid tests? And um, how often do you, do you expect uh, people to be using these? Um, look, I'm going to let the experts give us some advice on this. My instinct, though, is uh, anything I can do to give people confidence that you can go to school and you can go to school safely, that would mean for me it would be a priority. Anybody symptomatic, we get you a test when you're at school. Okay, and um, not to open the football Pandora's box again, but do you anticipate these tests being used um, to help open athletics around the state? Um, I think. Uh, right now, my priority, I think, would be schools and some of these other vulnerable populations that uh, Josh uh, uh, talked about. But yes, this gives you an idea of how the landscape is changing in terms of testing and therapies that allow more sports to be available sooner, uh, but not right now. I, th I think it's important to keep the numbers in perspective as well. So we're going to, we've been told we're going to get 69,000 tests next week. Just as a point of reference, we reported 52,000 tests just last weekend on our own. Um, and when you look out to the end of the year, we've been told maybe a million tests or so by the end of the year, and we're doing about a half a million per month uh, right now on a run rate basis in Connecticut. So, you know, if you think about 600,000, you know, teachers and students across the state, um, you know, we'll, we could go through these pretty quickly, um, so we need to use them strategically. Okay, and one question a little off topic. Um, the several districts, school districts, are set to lose their uh, magnet school grants as a result of the transgender athlete policy uh, next month. Has the state come up with a strategy on how to handle that? Well, I think you know that I've objected strongly to the heavy-handed approach the federal government is using in punishing these kids in magnet schools and those uh, kids particularly in need. I know that uh, Attorney General Tong is taking uh, legal um, avenues here to uh, pursue this as well. Uh, so that's all I have to say at this point. Okay. Thank you very much. Fox 61. Hi, Governor. Uh, Matt Karen, Fox 61. Obviously, something's better than nothing when it comes to the, you know, the rapid tests in the schools and in those vulnerable populations. But I did want to ask you if uh, any, has anyone talked to you about the reliability of those rapid tests? It's my understanding that there can be a tendency for a 10 to 20 percent false negative rate um, and just wondering your concern level about that. Well, this is a very different test than the um, last Abbott Lab five-minute test, antigen test. And what they've uh, explained to me anyway in the uh, COVID task force is it's probably 97 percent accurate for people who are showing symptoms. Obviously, if you're not showing symptoms yet, it's uh, a little bit less accurate. But I think this is um, a pretty good backstop to what we want to do, especially when it comes to anybody who maybe is uh, symptomatic. We can test them on the spot. You know whether that class has to quarantine or doesn't have to quarantine. I think it does, is a big deal. All right, thank you for that. Um, and I did just want to ask you in a couple of minutes, there's going to be a group calling for the closure of the Northern Correctional Institution outside the LOB. Um, and they're calling for the end of solitary confinement. I know the Corrections Commissioner has been pretty transparent, saying that there will be facility closures. I'm wondering if you think Northern Correctional should be one of them, considering the fact that, you know, it was recently discovered that inmates were hiding their COVID symptoms because they did not want to go to the medical isolation unit there, which has since been moved. So do you think Northern Correctional should close? Look, I'm not going to weigh in on that. That's why we have um, our Commissioner Corrections to take a look at this. But your broader point is right. We have half as many people incarcerated today as we had, whatever it is, 15 years ago. We're at significant savings to the taxpayer. Um, and if that trend continues, we'll be looking at other correctional facilities to see um, how many we need. Yeah, and I'll also add that uh, uh, Commissioner Angel Carroll, uh, our new Commissioner of Department of Corrections, did put forth a policy as it deals with COVID-only units in Northern, and they will not be utilizing that. So he immediately came in, did a review of uh, the procedures and the practices, and made that uh, determination and provided that information to our office. So uh, that will be put in order in short order. 
Thank you both. The Connecticut Mirror. Thanks, Max. Uh, Governor, I wanted to ask you about school construction bonding specifically. Uh, six months ago, you and the legislature approved some school construction bond authorization amounts, and they're going to come in in special session soon and come up with a project bill. Um, are you going to allow them to increase the total amount of authorizations for school construction? Well, I'll start on this, and maybe uh, Paul can step in. But look, we had authorizations in terms of the amount of money we wanted to do in school construction. Obviously, if the legislature comes in with an expanded uh, list of expenses, um, you know, Melissa and our team, we're going to be very strict in trying to hold the line there, have enough to get the schools done appropriately without, without a lot of other expenses added on to it. Yeah. I think that's part of what the discussion has been for the last week around here. Yeah, and I'll also add that the, the bill that will be put forth to the legislature is, is much streamlined and much smaller than what was originally presented to this administration. I think one of the reasons why the legislative session is starting this week and not the previous week is because the governor wanted to hold the line on what the school construction was and what it's going to be. And that's always been a mantra in the mindset of this administration in terms of fiscal responsibility for the state of Connecticut. Paul, could you clarify, though? So are you saying there is a strict line that you, you folks would not allow any increase in the authorizations, or are you saying you're trying to minimize that increase? Uh, what I'm saying is that the bill that was originally put forth to this administration is not going to be the one that's reflected and voted on by the legislature this week. So we've I already... I followed that part. Are you, are you willing to elaborate further, though, and say whether or not you're willing to permit any increase in the authorization? Um, what I would elaborate further on is say that uh, we will continuously, through the Department of Office of Policy and Management, uh, be keeping a close eye on all the related fiscal matters when it comes to bonding, including school construction. Okay, and then just one more quick follow, Governor. Um, you've been warning the legislature since April 30th that revenues have eroded by billions of dollars. They have, for the last five months, opted not to revise the revenue schedule, which would in turn lower the limit on the state's credit card and force them and you to begin planning to cancel bonding. Would it be inappropriate, given that, given that warning you gave them five months ago, would it be inappropriate to uh, approve any increases in school bonding authorization amounts? Um. Keith, first of all, I think you know that uh, we've been uh, very limited in terms of the amount of bonding we have done in general, certainly the amount of bonding we've done so far this fiscal year. The bond commission meeting we just had was $64 million, um, and that's in part because I think we're going to know in the next two to four months have a much better idea, A, what our revenues look like as a state going forward, and B, what we can expect from the federal government. And uh, so... I think the timing, uh, give us another couple of months, we'll have a much better idea in terms of what those revenues assumptions are going to look like and what our bonding needs are going to look like. Governor, one last follow on that, though. Between now and the next couple of months, we'll have an election. Do you think some voters might take it the wrong way to see the legislature expanding bonding now? Then, a few weeks from now, we have an election. Then, shortly after that, we revised the revenue schedule and canceled five to ten times the amount of bonding we just approved. I think you've got to be forthright with uh, the voters, absolutely. Um, uh, right now, we, what do we have? Just the, um, do we even have the August revenue numbers? It's still very early to have an idea in this incredibly turbulent time where revenue assumptions are jumping around like a ping-pong ball to make really clear indications of what we think the next uh, – you know, 10 months are going to look like. I think we've been pretty transparent in terms of how we think about what we do uh, budgeting going forward. I'd go further, though, when it comes to taxes, you know, um, I've been very strict on taxes, and that's why uh, we've husbanded a rainy day fund to do everything we can to make sure that we can continue to power through, maintain our commitment to our social services without having to raise taxes. I would think that um, if you're a legislator and sort of thinking about uh, taxes, you probably ought to put that on the table in terms of what your thinking is now during the election, to your point, so there are no surprises after the election. Thank you. CT News Junkie. Thanks, Max. Hi, Governor. Um, so I just want
wanted to know the uh, eviction moratorium expires in two days. I wanted to know whether you plan on extending that. Yeah, what I've told the team is, look, I, I think we're going to have to extend that, but I don't want to just extend that. I want to extend that as part of our process to make sure that we have rent relief that allows um, landlords and tenants to create a path so people can start paying and making a due on their rent payments. So I think we're going to be able to roll out both the extension on the non-eviction as well as our, our rent relief strategy over the next few days. Do we know that um, rent relief has been, um, the, the rent relief the state has offered, has more of that gone out the door? Um, I, I can't speak to that. I can speak to the fact that we're working with all the rent counselors out there. They know the amount of money. we got additional money available as needed. Uh, it's not simply a matter of just handing out money to uh, landlords and tenants. That's not the way we're going to do it. It's going to require a discussion, a negotiation between tenant and landlord to make sure that they have a way that they can stay in their apartment safely uh, for the foreseeable future. And as far as the deadline is concerned, are you thinking through the end of the year would be the extension? I think so, but let me finalize that. Okay. Thank you. Connecticut Public Media. Good morning. This question is for Josh. In terms of the app and tracing, um, what is the percentage of people in the state that are using it, you know, using it, and how confident are you that you can get Connecticut residents to um, download this app and trust their phone to reveal this information to others, even though you are saying that you remain anonymous? Sure. Well, right now the percentage of people using it is zero because uh, it hasn't been turned on in Connecticut yet. Um, but when we get ready to announce it and turn it on, um, we'll have a lot of education and information about that. But for now, just know that this uh, Google-Apple partnership is set up to be completely anonymous. So if that notification does go out, it doesn't say anything about where it happened, when it happened, who it happened with. It just gives you a little bit more information as a consumer to know that you may have been in a situation that was at risk and then help give you some guidance about actions that you can take to protect yourself and your family and your community. The anonymity is really important because it's not simply a matter of this being available. It is ten times more effective if ten times more people feel comfortable uh, having this app on their, uh, on their smartphone. So that's why we're uh, leading with anything that gives you confidence. This is for your public health and safety. The Waterbury Republican American. Uh, thanks. Um, I want to follow up on uh, something Keith asked you. I thought earlier uh, you had said that uh, you weren't planning on raising taxes. Um, to help solve the state's budget problems. Is that still your position? And what would you tell legislators who plan to run uh, in these last few weeks on the tax increase? Well, I think you know me. I'm, I'm very strict on taxes. And um, uh, because of our rainy day fund, because we've husbanded our resources, because we're streamlining state government, um, I think we're going to be in a strong position to be able to get through this next year without raising taxes. An even stronger position if the federal government steps up and provides some uh, state and local support. Uh, what I was saying before is if anybody um, you know, wants to lead with taxes um, or, or specific spending, you know, I think that should be part of your campaigns. No hide the football. Let people know where you stand. Okay. Um, just a, a quick follow-up on the, uh, the Abbott, tad, uh, Abbott lab test. Excuse me. Will there be any, like, distribution of these tests to directly to the Department of Correction, for example, or the Department of Children and, and Families, um, or other, other state agencies? I know, uh, Josh, you mentioned uh, the rapid response teams, but I could imagine uh, there are some uh, agencies where uh, they might want to have these things on hand. Well, we've, we've already established uh, robust testing programs for the, the agencies that you described, and they've been very effective in driving the infection rates down dramatically, and certainly in our Department of Corrections facilities and elsewhere. Um, as the Governor mentioned, I mean, we just found out about this yesterday. We've got a couple ideas here of where we would like to deploy these. We'll continue to look at more opportunities as we get more inventory uh, shipped into Connecticut. 
Okay, and uh, Josh, uh, or Governor, uh, what, what is the plan for releasing the uh, consultant's report on uh, how the state uh, and the nursing home industry uh, handled uh, uh, the COVID outbreak? Uh, you know, we had the interim report on September 15th, and I believe uh, the final report's due tomorrow, is it not? Yes, we're planning to, uh, um, that report will be published later this week, and uh, we will have uh, more information on that later this week. Thank you very much. All right, hearing no further questions, um, look forward to seeing you all in person sometime soon. Take care, everybody.